They had been stuck in the truck what felt like forever now. But Clementine honestly couldn't tell the difference. It felt like it could have been hours or minutes. Everything seemed to bend together. There was a big enough room in the truck to move around this time, though for the spacious state wasn't like the dark reminder of how large their group was then before. Although Sarah and Clementine were seated close to one another, the rest of the group were all spaced out at a reasonable distance away. This was probably to give everyone a chance to sit in their own thoughts, but Clementine couldn't help but worry. She wanted to respect their privacy, but she felt like she needed to check up on certain members of the group. Arvo, how are you feeling? Clementine whispered, crawling over closer to him. Now that she got a close look at glance at the teen, he had what the look of someone who had given up, worn, bruised, and hurt. His good leg was curled up to his chest, and one bad one stretched out in front of him. His blue eyes shifted over to look at her, with a pained look reflecting back. Fever is gone, I think, he murmured, biting his lip. But tis not the only problem. No? Clementine asked. What's wrong, then? A mournful sigh. Arvo just shook his head, placing his own chin to his knee in front of his chest. Everything wrong. Tried to escape, but captured and brought back. Not stuck here with... He, after spitting out a certain word, he directly at Kenny. His eyes narrowed. Clementine couldn't know what it meant, but she didn't see it as being a nice word. I'm sorry you got wrapped up in this, she confessed quietly. Do you mean to take the supplies from the trash? Arvo asked. His tone suggested, as he already knew the answer. We didn't know they belonged to someone, Clementine reasoned. And besides, with our wounded, there was no other choice. It felt like forever ago, but you could... Clear, she clearly remember how Jane persuaded her to take the medicine. With two sick members of the party at the time, there wasn't really seemed to be all, the alternative. If Clementine would just go back in time and try to deny those certain someone antibiotics. She shook her head. Poisonous thoughts would do no good to her now. Arvo seemed to be considered her answer. Though with the sigh, she replied, Honestly, I may have done the same thing if I saw that there. I'm sorry I keep blaming you. You were not the only one at fault. He scrunched up his eyes closed, shuddering with the breath passing through him. Her heart twisted. Don't apologize. You don't have anything to be sorry for, Arvo. And for what is worth, I never want any of this to happen to you. No one would want these things to happen, little girl, Arvo replied sadly. They just happened. I don't want it to come to America at all. But yeah, I hear now. I don't want Natasha dead, but she is. Do I want to be all alone? And yet I am. A never long sigh. The teen screwed his eyes shut in frustration. It was all occurring to her now. But Clementine hadn't really been giving Arvo enough thought. Just as he was a part of the huge group, anyone, despite Kenny, treated him like a prisoner up until now. And he had deserved her respect as much as everyone else. Hell, she thought she had put more care into being kind to Troy as she did with Arvo. And that thought boiled her blood. You were born in Russia then? She asked, trying to change the subject. Why did you come to America? It just seemed to be an innocent enough topic, but Arvo just looked pained and answered. Natasha and I came over here with family. Almost killed before we got here. The ones who survived the boat did not survive you. He then took a look at particulars angry, but not happy either, as he thought he was too numb to care about the events of the recollecting. To the people who were cut off in this, killed off in this scuffle, Clementine didn't care if he dared to refer them to as the people they killed. Were Arvo's family? It made sense, so why was she surprised? Her sister had been there. His sister had been, had been there, hadn't she? Why would she think of the other members of this family being with him too? Those people, she couldn't even think to ask. The reality that would help orphan Arvo in his cruel world was heavy on her shoulders. She never wanted to feel responsible for things like this. My muscles, Barreco and Vitella. Strong man worked for me and Natasha hard. They were not the kindness, but still, still family. Arvo closed his eyes and shook his head, clearly trying to wear off any unpleasant memories. Clementine couldn't understand to disagree. To a degree. Her family has its fair share of rotten apples, too. She remembered one of her aunts not being there particularly nice to her own children. Clementine's extended family never talked about her, but it was clear that some conflict there. Clementine wasn't sure how she if she how she'd survive 
if her aunt had been instead someone like Lee. In fact, she knew she probably wouldn't have. But it wasn't the first time that she felt some an eerie connection with someone who had never been spoken to before the apocalypse. I'm sorry, she repeated in a whisper. I know we can't start over after all that's happened, but I hope we can work together from this point forward wherever we go. And she truly meant that. Whatever they were doing, she imagined Arvo being there with everyone else. He was just as part of the group as anyone, really. The teen didn't really say anything, considering the words until a rough voice broke up the silence like rocks through glass window. If you're planning on staying with us this time, that is. Kenny's rough voice sounded out of place for their quiet conversation. He was close enough to hear them. It seemed or at least a grist of the conversation. It seems likely given to the past incidents. Arvo stared at the man, foreseeing the words, instead of being upset or angry that Kenny jabbed him like that. The teen merrily asked, Why do you not want me to go? He looked generally curious, rather than demanding. I have nowhere else to go. I cannot bring back more people to fight. I don't want to stay here where I'm not wanted. Kenny quirked a brow. You were our prisoner, so you, I needed to say, stay. But why? Arvo pressed. What could I offer more? It actually seemed that Kenny didn't have an answer to that. He opened his mouth to reply, but held an eerie silence for long moments. Finally, he sighed. Actually, I don't know. I guess it was sort of me not wanting you to get away after what you did to Sarita. Arvo found Sarita, she was your friend, yes? I'm so sorry you lost her. I don't want anyone to die. Gritting his teeth, Kenny spelled. Well, too fucking bad. She did die. Because you bastards. And I'll never forget or forgive that. That Burkro and Vetella and Natasha, they all died too. On both sides, Arvo dropped his gaze, playing all of, all of the him with his hoodie. Can't change what happened. Clementine saw it was in awe of the conversation, was watching quietly as Arvo spoke more calm words to Kenny, and probably collectively in the short time with them. She watched Kenny stare at him, though desperately trying to keep this grudge against Arvo and the teen continued to spoke steadily. She knew him long enough, and look in his eyes proved that he was wavering. What do you mean you said before, kid? Kenny said abruptly. Then decide on what to do with you. You asked to, to kill you? Did you really want to die? With a heartbreaking, sad smile, Arvo nodded. I would rather not be in the world than me much longer, if it's in my control. She said with a non challenged shrug, There's nothing left. Kenny watched him, closing his eyes and leaning back against the wall. Well, that's selfish of you, if you ask me. Selfish? Arvo echoed, squirting. Ding. It would not harm anyone but me. Yeah, but you... Don't have to just end it because it's hard. You stick it out to help the folks you care about, Kenny snapped. The words seemed so natural to him, if he had said them before. Arvo opened his mouth to reply, but Kenny cut him off, counting. I know it seems like you don't have anyone left to care about, but I say it's bullshit. Look at me. Look at Mike. Look at Sarah, Clem. They care about you for the same reason, and they're all pretty good people. If they care... It would not be for a long time, Arvo argued under his breath. I am a stranger. Then, think if you're that sister of yours. She wouldn't want you to quit, would she? Kenny pointed out. Think about all that. Think about her. Next time you just want to give up. Speechless, the Russian teen eyed him. You hate me. You do care what happens if I was dead. Would you not be happy? Kenny shook his head. Look, kid, I may not be look like much... But that is just still the worst way to go in this god-awful world. That would bother me in a whole frickin' lot, because no one needs to get go that way. Blinking Arvo considered Kenny's words. You speak from experience. She then po He pointed out quietly, but Kenny didn't confirm or deny it. Clementine knew that Kenny was thinking about, and she was glad that she hadn't been there to see Katja's body, being so young at the time. She wasn't even sure she would have been able to handle it. Just remember what I said, and I'm done talking to you. Kenny spat, turning away from the teen. In Clementine just blinked, hesitating to go first to approach him, but with a soft glance as he met her way of this comforting. It seemed like he wasn't angry, merely saddened by his memories, and Clementine could definitely relate to that.
Are you okay, Kenny? She shifted her attention over to the older man, raising it in her eyes to meet his. Upon closer inspection, he looked more weary than she'd ever have seen him. His age showed in deep wrinkles and not tired, half-lidded eye on his face, but he still was tired to show the old Kenny fire to her. Smiling a bit as she focused her attention on him, instinctively she found herself scooting closer to him, despite his temper, despite the cruel moments, Clementine still regarded him as a father figure, seeing him talk with Arvo like a normal normal human would. Woods was rather comforting and let her sit feel still safe around him. Yeah, I'm fine, darling, he rasped, shifting himself to sit closer to her as well. Sorry, I guess I sort of butted into the conversation with Arvo there, huh? With a slight, curi with a slight curiosity, Clementine noticed that it might have been the first time Kenny called Arvo by name, but she wasn't about to point it out. Instead, she merely shook her head. Don't worry, I didn't mind that at all. I think it's good that you two have talked some things out. Kenny scoffed. Well, I doubt I'd ever be like the kid, but I finally got it from my head. Fighting is the last thing we need right now. Pleased, Clementine nodded. I agree. And you don't need to like or be like Arvo just to let him be there for him now. Yeah, I always had a problem with people I don't like much being in the group. Remember Lily and Larry? She felt faintly insulted that she thinks she forgot them. Of course, she replied a bit snappy. But if there's going to be people you don't like in every group, it's just going to be like people you do like and respect. Yeah, you could say that again, Kenny agreed. Thinking about that particular group started and where they were now, it broke her heart. How many good people they were lost. She wouldn't give to see Luke and what he would do in this situation. Or how Nick would weigh in. Rebecca would be sassy as always. Or would Pete try to go through to get one of the guards? The absences only cut into her more as she thought of them. Though she quickly shook her head, clear lingering in the thoughts of memories. Kenny must have noticed that she was spacing out. He put a hand on her shoulder, glanced over to her. I haven't really had the chance to talk to you lately, Clem. He said, it's either been me throwing a fit or us being attacked or captured. I know it ain't easy to deal with the circumstances, but do you really need to talk about anything? The warmth spread through her chest in his concern, and that just proved to Kenny that she knew that, that she was still here, caring about her as always. It reminded her of that, that there were still good people, despite all the negativity she has seen as of late. I'm not okay, but not not okay either, she murmured. Knowing that it just made no sense. She didn't want to lie to Kenny, but she also didn't want him to worry about her. Especially considering that they were in the middle of... I kind of get what you mean. Are you hurt anywhere? She then looked at her head. No, I'm just angry, she admitted, falling her hands into fists on her lap. We didn't do anything wrong. What had the group had done to provoke the house guards? Aside from killing Carver, of course, but then yet again... Who had put some of them in unfairly in the first place. Believe me, I know, Kenny replied, shaking his head. It just turns my stomach. The way those bastards got the upper hand on us so quickly, we weren't prepared for an attack. I'll admit I've been focused much on getting to Wellington that I've never really considered how those folks may come around. I don't think anyone thought of that, Clementine muttered. I didn't think Troy would do any of that to us, for sure. She couldn't help but let some of the bitterness pass through her tone swallowing hard and closing her eyes for a moment. Despite the fright of being killed outright at house or worked to death being much more prominent in Clementine's mind, she couldn't help but focus on how much Troy's decisions had really hurt her. The rage inside of her was continuing to boil like a tea kettle, rubbing, bubbling in her stomach as she thought she swallowed poison. Honestly, she didn't even know why it's done as much as it did. Troy was a bastard from the start, but it wasn't like she had any intention of making him look like an ally when she saved him. It was more she like did the right thing to do at the time. So she hesitated and went through with it. And now look where they were now. She felt like a fool for growing to trust him, to care about him, even like she would in any other member of the group. She found herself getting used to Troy being there and even looking into an input on certain situations. It was stupid of her. 
she was almost embarrassed to be easily tricked. Kenny gave her a long look, her eyebrows, then his eyebrows knitting together in thought. You must be really affected by what that asshole did, Clem. He must have meant something to you, huh? He guessed Franny. I'm sorry, Clem. It hurts a lot of you folks when you think they're your friends and then they all of a sudden betray you. She nodded slowly. It did hurt, incredibly so. But she knew she wouldn't stop at what she was doing and just sulk about it. She would turn the betrayal and she felt it turned around by it somewhere progressive. Something worth a while that would help someone. She couldn't as much as she wanted to. This was her only mental hurdle that she wasn't able to jump over just yet. But it didn't mean that she was going to mope. Being unfocused and around almost a clear death sentence nowadays, she just wished that she could shake the nauseating feeling from her stomach and did not care as much as she did. You should get some rest, Clem, Kenny said. The way I see it, they're giving us time to sleep, so we might as well. No try and point now to escape now, when they are all watchful eye on us. Frustrated as she was with the circumstances, that did make sense. With a defeated shrug, she said, Okay, I guess I'll try. Good night, Kenny. Night, darling. As Clementine moved to her back where she was sitting before, she heard Arvo whispering his own goodnight wishes along with thank you, Clementine. She then smiled, and then she nodded towards him. Not saying anything more as she reached to the original spot next to Sarah, surprised him with a yawn. She curled up against the wall of the truck, trying to get as comfortable as possible, like it just was the cold and the damp as always, but she figured huddling on herself would provide her at least a little warmth. Sarah's back was also against hers, which definitely helped her keep away of the harshness of the cold. Sarah whispered her goodnights, and Clementine felt her eyelids growing heavy. Her friend's breathing was soft growing more romantic as she drifted off. But despite how comforting the sounds were, Clementine would, couldn't even stop her mind from buzzing her thoughts. So many things had changed within the past few hours and she couldn't even believe the last place she slept was the Russian's house, feeling as safe and warm as she was allowed to nowadays. Flipping onto her back, she stared up at the ceiling of the truck, her eyes unblinking. She wished she didn't have the, this restless energy for sleeping. It seemed to be like the option for her for the time being, just like what Kenny said. They couldn't do anything now, so why not take advantage of the arrest while they could? Time dragged on as she waited for her sleep to greet her, only to be continuously stranded into the conscious world. With a frustration sigh, she sat up. Shifting carefully, she didn't want to wake Sarah, who was now in a deep sleep beside her. Dull noises sounded from the outside of the truck. It had to be past midnight now. They seemed like they were being guarded throughout the night. Clementine gave out a long sigh, trying to imagine herself as far away from here as possible. Somewhere safe, warm, and comforting. She and her fantasy, she imagined Lee with her as well. She didn't realize that she had fallen asleep. The next morning, she became aware of the sunlight cracking through the doors. Blinking herself away, Clementine slowly set herself up, whipping off a stray drool that hung at the bottom of her chin. Sarah stretched beside her. The older girl's messy hair would be an enormous sight in the other situation. But Clementine couldn't muster up even the smallest giggles of it. In fact, she was assured that her own hair would just look just as bad if it wasn't for her father's hat. Morning, Clem, Sarah whispered, frowning. So, was it a nightmare, hun? Huh? Clementine then shook her head. I guess not. How she wished the whole thing was just a horrible dream. Maybe she'd wake up back at the safe house with Luke falling up next to the cold fire but alive with Nick beside him or ideally Sandra would be waking her up after a long nap to tell her that her parents had returned home from Savannah she suppressed that with a sigh with the nostalgic thoughts like they weren't getting air anywhere the sight of Sarah rubbing her cheek brought her back to reality Troy's proof of loyalty had done a number on her Clementine then gazed at her concern which Sarah noticed it immediately it's okay, don't worry, it's just sore, she said, waving it off. Clementine wasn't convinced, but she merely smiled and slightly nodded, dropping the subject. Looking around, Clementine noticed that everyone else had been awake for a while now, probably letting out the two youngest members sleep until they were either woken up or so did naturally. She smiled as she jetted lightly in for appreciation, greeting them with a quiet good morning. The rest of the group murmured in her own responses. 
Kenny leaned over towards her. Morning, Clem. Sleep well? She gave him a look that probably should have made her answer the obvious. Upon seeing the deadpan expression, Kenny smirked and shook his head. Should have known better than to ask that, sorry. Despite all of it, she smiled. It's okay, I know what you meant. When I finally did sleep, it was fine. Well, good, Kenny said. Actually, I wanted to talk to anyone, but I was waiting for you to be awake to hear it. She blinked, watching curiously as she scooted herself to the place where she could easily see the rest of the group. Hey, y'all. Kenny raised his voice just a little, getting everyone's attention. Listen up and come around closer, so I don't have to shout. With a little protest, the rest of the group scuttled closer, seeing themselves in the half circle in front of Kenny. Many of them just seemed as lost as Clementine in this situation. Desperate for anyone to point them out in the right direction. We're going to end up putting our heads together about what to do here, Kenny began, sweeping his gaze over to everyone. I know we're in a little antsy to escape. Understatement of the century, Grandpa, Jane mumbled under her breath. Ignore he ignored her, continuing. Granted, when we were in this situation before, my idea was to punch the way out of the truck, and that didn't work. That bastard Troy even yelled at me for getting my restraints off. I don't know if uh, that will work as well in this situation. Even if I wasn't there, I agree, Bonnie spoke up. This feels a lot different than it was with Bill. Havia seems just more as dangerous as more calculating as we were aware. I don't know. Maybe it's because they got the drop on us and I'm spooked, but... She uncurled her knees to her chest, insecurely giving a sigh and not saying any more. Jane shifted her feet and crossed her legs casually. I never should have stuck with all of you guys, she muttered to herself. Carver was bad enough, and now Tavia is a complete lunatic. Why do I get myself into these situations? Despite the harsh words, Mike's response was sympathetic. Jane, I know you're upset because of what happened with Troy, but... The look that Jane shot back was honestly terrifying. Her eyes were almost slits. Her teeth bared like a lioness about to strike. If you want to be able to have kids someday, I wouldn't continue that sentence. Instantly, Mike lifted his palms in defense. Okay, okay. I didn't mean to touch that nerve. You didn't, Jane snapped. I don't appreciate slander is all. Clementine huffed a frustration sigh and interrupted them. We don't have time for this, Jane and Mike. What do you think we should do about escaping? She tried, but not all sure to herself. For the first time in a long while, she felt completely lost and misdirected, like if she was traveling through a cloud of smoke. All options were just seem out of reach and possible for her. The two didn't reply, so she just pressed, Nothing. Anyone else, then? We're going to be stuck here forever, aren't we? Sarah sighed in her expression forlorn. Kenny, Kenny chuckled with giving a weary smirk. Don't worry, hon. I'm go not going to let these bastards keeping us prisoners twice now. Sarah still didn't look convinced, still frowning, but asked, But do you even have a plan? Well, okay, not exactly, but I do have a proposition of sorts, Kenny said, causing everyone to look away regardless. Look, all of these assholes are the enemy, and arguing with them last time didn't work none. We don't owe them any words, so I'm calling it here now. We don't say nothing to them, no matter what words whatsoever. Can we agree on that at least? Kenny asked, looking around at everyone expectantly. The group had mixed expressions, but no one seemed outright up possessed to the idea. Almost looked outright puzzled. Clementine herself hadn't even thought of it, but it did make sense. Her mouthing off to Carver back when first meeting brought to Howe's, had earned her a slap on the cheek, and Sarah ended up talking it out loud during Carver's speech, which resulted in her own smack. Last time they questioned things, she spoke out a turn and angered Carver, and they were just hasty in their desperation attempts to escape before the walker herd passed by, and ultimately, it ended in them losing some members of their party. This time, they couldn't be hurt more cautious than quiet, could it? Silence is a common protest technique, Jane pointed out. Furving come Clementine's train of thought. It's like saying F you without actually saying it. Well, anything. It doesn't give them the chance to jump on us for being defiant. But how would it work? Sarah asked, fidgeting. I mean, um, I'm fine with everyone else's, but what if they get angry at us or hurt us for not talking? Clementine placed a hand on her friend's shoulder. If they start making friends like that, then I think it'd be okay to speak. Kenny nodded. That's exactly right. We want to keep everyone safe above all, and not speaking is the best way to keep ourselves protected. 
If we needed to speak to protect someone, well, of course you can. Sarah nodded, still a little bit shaky. Okay, but does that make sense then? I like that plan. I can do that. Clementine smiled brightly, squeezing Sarah's shoulder in, in support. All right then. That is the beginning of our approach, Kenny said. But before we came up with the actual plan to escape, let's go over what we do know. Hal's plan is on is making us their workers again. And we're heading back there as soon as those bastards say it's time. Wait, how is it, is it even that close? Bonnie points out. We're a couple of hours drive away. Kenny then raised his eyebrow. Oh, I see. So we got a bit some time to hatch something up. If we actually manage to concentrate and not talk about that shit, that doesn't matter. Jane hissed, giving Mike one last glare. No one paid her any mind. Instead, focusing on what Kenny and Bonnie had said, and it didn't make sense, despite it being the anxious one in response. Clementine did feel a bit better, hearing Kenny in particular rationalize it. She did let out a breath, and she didn't even know what she was holding. All we gotta do is manage to break out of there, and when that time comes, Kenny explained, fervor ruling questions. But since they have AJ in the other truck, that makes things a little more complicated, so we're gonna have to wait until the time is right. Bonnie nodded. Okay, so what can we do? While they were all probably as still asleep? They're all not asleep, Clementine points out. I hear some voices out last night. Means someone's probably out there guarding us and they don't even know if they could hear us, though. Kenny considered her words. All right, we better make sure first. Clem, can you see anything through that crack over there? She asked. He asked a bit sheepishly. I'd look myself, but it's kind of small. With a nod, Clementine wasted no time. She crawled over towards the doors, using the dented walls to keep herself balanced. Murmurs hummed nearby if there was enough crack between the closed doors to peer through. It didn't give her much visibility, but if she closed her one eye and then looked carefully, she could see the forms outside. Just beyond the truck from the lack of one arm and the beanie on the other, she could only conclude that it was Troy and Lau. Well, there's two, she whispered, when she looked back at her friends. Sarah flashed her thumbs up and then looked again listening more clearly this time. I can't believe you've been out here all night, Lau said whining, his voice strained. Yeah, well, you wanted to leave the chickens unattended? You know we have a history of leaving, Troy pointed out, although he did sound annoyed. Lau's shoulders slumped. I guess you're right. Someone will have to make it sure the doors are shut tightly with the last of our rope. I think you can manage doing that? Troy paused with his tone harsh. Of course I can. What do you... Do you not trust me or something? Lau sounded a bit offended. What? No, it's not that. I mean, just saying with your arm, it may be hard, and we'll have to be careful with that little rope we have. It ain't that bad. I could still shoot a gun, so shut it. I could do it just fine, Troy snapped, paused as he went silent for a moment. His head moved, indicating the little bit of looking across the small clearing eventually settling his gaze onto something that or someone that Clementine couldn't see. There was a signal. He gave a nod to whoever it was and promptly turned her back towards the door. Let's get the chickens up. Clementine scooted back, realizing they were about to open the door. They're coming, she relied to the others, as though further movements they didn't apply at all. Everyone shuffled in the casual look in position. As they were just waking up, they didn't know what was going on. Luckily, neither of the guards were the brightest and didn't notice anything strange when the doors were pried open. The sunlight streamed in more brightly without mercy. Clementine brought a hand up to close her, cover her eyes. Lau managed to laugh a bit of a hiss of annoyance, placing a boot on the inside of the truck, leaned for it. Ah, oh, sorry friends, did we wake you? He mocked. Everyone just seemed to stay at glare. No one said a word. They send their, their vigil almost eerie, but Clementine was determined to uphold it. So she just stared back as everyone else did, keeping their expression as blank as possible. Quirking an eyebrow, Lau then exchanged a glance with Troy. I kind of like them better quiet, he snickered. Troy shrugged once more, avoiding looking at her or everyone else with one eye. But when we give him the chance, he obviously decided to take charge. As long as they'll work, that's all that matters, he pointed out, staring at the back of the truck where no one else will be on the road soon. So everyone gotta take a shit before we go? Sarah wriggled her nose in disgust, but what is about the reaction everyone had? Everyone seemed to remain silent and blank-faced, so much so that Troy looked a bit bothered by how complaint they were being. 
Damn, I guess they finally figure out who's boss, Lao said, clapping over Troy's shoulder. I'm glad they actually seemed like they were good buddies to you. I wouldn't want to lose anyone unnecessarily. The one-armed man scoffed, shaking his head. They ain't my buddies, so you could quit that, but I'm glad too. Complaint prisoners are the good ones. The spark on his face seemed slight, but it was still there. Two more sets of footsteps approached the truck, and sure enough, Tavia and the remaining two guards came out to check on them. Tavia noticeably had bundled up AJ in her arms and was gently rocking the child with a disturbingly compassionate look on her face. Clementine scowled. How dare she look at them like that while the rest of them were being so treated badly? Good to see you, everyone, Tavia said, as she seemed to be honest. I'm sure Troy and Lau told you we'll be moving out soon, so keep your spirits up. We'll start rebuilding house once we get back. Kenny's anger shone on his face as between them, Tavia, and AJ, but he didn't say anything. Tavia noticed the angry look and curled her arms protectively around AJ. Don't you worry about the little one, she promised. As I said before, he'll be safe and sound with me. Clementine just stared, knowing her eyes through the annoyance. It was so hard to cross her arms when they were being tied up at the wrists, but she definitely would have been done sooner if the worst she could do to Tavia right now was to show her indifference, and she would do it. Tyler looked to Vera beside him and looked towards his leader. Anyway, um, it, it's getting kind of creepy. Can we just go now, Tavia? He asked, swallowing hard. I warmed our, our engine. Great to hear, Tavia replied. I wish the two would have thought of that. Troy lowered his gaze, muttering, Bill never has let us keep the engine running for too long. Well, I guess it's true, Tavia waved off the words off, glancing back at the group. Anyway, get comfortable. It'll be a little while, so settle in. And when we get no one answered, and she rolled her eyes, we'll have to talk this whole thing, silent thing up. Tyler's right. It's giving me the creeps. With a silent shudder, she gestured towards her two guards to follow her and turned around. Giving one last look, nod to Troy and Lau, she walked away with Vera and Tyler trailing behind her obediently. All right, Lau exclaimed. Let's get the show on the road. I'll go start her up. Troy, you'll get the doors? For the last time, yeah, Troy muttered, nodding to the other man. Go on. Lau then nearly bounced away, suddenly feeling the energy for some reason. Troy shook his head to the younger guard, reaching for the doors to shut. As he first shut the door, Clementine finally caught his gaze. The look he gave her was blank, but no hostile. He wasn't looking through her, either. It was though for the emotion he wanted to show how he got caught and pulled away. Like a dog being reeled back on a chain, he simply just blanked it, paused for a moment, making sure pointedly stared towards her. And then so someone had snapped him out of trance, a broken eye contact, and shut the door. If the darkness enveloped them around quickly, she would have heard the shuffling rope just outside, wondering what that look could have possibly meant if it meant anything at all. House was approximately two and a half hours away, according to Bonnie, which gave him some time to recollect themselves before coming together with their plan. Clementine knew that she needed a few minutes to bring herself back into reality, a state of place in mind that wasn't focusing on being quiet or analyzing any asshole's facial expression. It was rather a bumpy ride as they traversed. What Clementine could only assume was the snow-covered terrain that had large hills. She climbed on her way to the rest stop. Little scattering trip with Troy had only taken place a half a day ago, and yet it felt like an eternity ago, like it happened to the same other Clementine. The truck was definitely damaged by walkers, but it was sturdy enough to keep everyone else well. Once in a while, there would be a strong rut and lurch, and everyone would startle and have to reposition themselves. Clemson's heart hammered out of her chest with every jump, and she hated how difficult it was to hold on with the restraint's hands. This sucks, she murmured to, her, murmured to herself. It really did. Sarah heard her. You could say that again, the other girl mumbled. Everyone else mostly kept to themselves, hopefully formulating plans on how to both escape and rescue AJ. Clementine herself was certainly thinking about it as she weighed the risk of distracting the guards, sacrificing herself using the others as bait. There were so many possibilities, and yet she couldn't think of one plan that would have the Janine's success. In every scenario she imagined, she couldn't see how the guard or two grabbing a gun or shooting her or anyone else dead before they even had the chance to get AJ. Tavia herself was harm armed, and now they could all disarm all five of their foes, 
And would they have no weapons whatsoever? With a sigh, Clementine was just about to ask Sarah for her own input when she noticed Kenny Shakely standing up. She intensed the alarm, wondering what he was going to do. Was anything rash? He just relaxed when she noticed him, gently shifting against the wall. His facial expression was neutral. Thankfully, it seemed that he wasn't going to make any rageful attempt to escape, like last time.